I think that there's a couple key factors in going through this process with you. At least it was for me because I had, I've always had the desire to do introspective work. I've always been the one that's always said, I want to continually work on me because you're, if you think you've arrived, that's when it's over. <laughs> so I've literally always had that mindset. People have all these issues bottled up for years and they're just one trigger away to wanting to unburden, right? Because when you carry those emotions, it's energy. It's weighing on them, right? But then they don't trust that they can speak about it. They don't trust that um, that it's a safe place or a safe time to talk about it. So they just hold it in until they get some indication that it's okay to talk about it. Uh -huh. And it all just comes out with the emotions and everything. You know? From a core perspective, I think people want to have a peace with their inner being because that's who we are what we're what you had taught me was we have this who we are internally and then we have this perception of who we are whether it's somebody else it's somebody else has a perception but you actually have a perception of yourself that's not who you are as your core being so take away all of what we look like, take away all of the things, the fit, you know, tangible things that we've acquired, take about, take away all of, you know, so any wealth, any, whatever we have, take all of that away. And then you're left with who you are as an, an inner being. Mm -hmm. And that inner being has no other choice, but to be in alignment with source, because that's where it came from. It comes down to self-fulfillment. Okay, because mm -hmm. when you're born, you have children are authentic, right? They do as they do. They speak as they speak. They act as they act. They don't ask themselves whether, whether it's okay to do this or not. It's over time that they learn what's okay and what's not okay, right? Yeah. So by the time they hit teenage years, they end up being brought up in the world of expectations what people expect of you you shouldn't do this and you should not do that and you must do this and you must do that so we give up that authenticity and exchange it for meeting expectations because it's a survival thing right if you want to be okay in life meet people's expectations and you'll be okay and that happens everywhere in relationships at work with your, you know, peers and any relationship you have, you want to make sure that you're meeting people's expectations. So the more you're getting into the life of meeting expectations, the more you become removed from your true self, right? So, and then along the way, you have trauma, right? You have, life happens, things happen to people over time. When trauma happens, you force these personalities or some sort of character type that helps you deal with that situation so that you can continue to meet expectations. Yeah. So we prioritize meeting expectations over taking care of ourselves. Right. Over time, it's self, it's, it starts to add up. So all these emotions you keep them bottled in, right? You keep them compressed and packed up and it, the tower gets taller and taller as you progress in life. So ultimately, the goal is to lead people or guide people to find that inner peace where you reconnect with your authentic self. That means you have to go through the progressions of whatever, the traumas and the you know, the programming and the guilt and all that stuff, you clear all that out of your way so that you can reconnect with yourself and find that inner peace, right? Yeah. So that's the general idea. Now, it sounds pretty straightforward, but 
like any journey, right? To get to the mountains, you have to go through the desert and the valley and cross rivers and paddle through lakes and until you get there. And that's pretty much the work, right? You have to kind of trace that trail and see what happened along the way that might have caused you to be the person you are today and then work your way backward to clear the road so that you can reconnect with yourself. The way I visualize this is having multiple circles, right? Like, and you can fill in the circle description, like where the, what the trauma was. And then how did you, cause you had me connect the dots between you did this backwards, which is exactly what needs to happen. You take a new, what consider is considered a new trigger or a new trauma. And you figure out how it connects back to that original, you know, circle that didn't complete when you were a child so they Mm -hmm. can start visualizing that that's what's happening is that circle that is not completing got Mm -hmm. interrupted and therefore and you are better explaining this but therefore when something else that resembles that enough yes to make it feel a certain way and sometimes that's it's a comfort level even if it's another trauma that you're getting yourself into it's like you constantly go seeking something like that because it feels familiar, yeah. but then you keep getting the same result of it, not, you know, resolving. Mm-hmm. And then you can't quite figure out why it's happening to you. Interesting. Yes. Um, I'm glad you brought that up. So basically, you know, I don't know if you uh, had a chance to look at my website, the, the, the book, that I'm writing is titled Proxy Diet, right? So the idea of a proxy and the proxy diet is exactly what you're describing. So when trauma happens, in order for you to preserve your authenticity, your psyche creates almost like a copy of you that is specifically designed to deal with that situation. So that means that because it's a toxic situation, right, that version of you comes with a level of toxicity, right? Now, this is all energy, right? So once, because it's like when somebody hates you, right, you have to defend yourself somehow. So you automatically turn into this defensive person, like, don't do this to me. So that means you're going to change your posture and your voice and your tone just so that that person understands, don't do this to me, right? Okay, imagine that whatever you did in that moment becomes frozen, stored inside of your psyche and continues to live with you throughout the years, right? So that proxy, right? (laughs) Basically, it's like an energy cluster that has a character to it because it came out of the need to deal with the situation. It lives on. Now, even though you got past the situation, this energy cluster has to sustain itself somehow it starts to create cycles in your life. So it feeds on that drama that created it. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So if you were in a situation where you needed to be a protector and you needed to be a fighter, right? Even if your life today does not require you to be a fighter and a protector, that proxy will continue to generate or create situation within which you will find yourself being that person over and over and over, even if you don't like it, right? So you get caught in this cycle. It's like a broken (laughs) record. So you recreate these circumstances that allow you to feel those emotions because that energy that came out of that emotion was never dealt with. Yeah. It becomes a part of you. It becomes a toxic part of you. But it lives on, right? So it keeps repeating these cycles 
and allowing you like allow it itself to feed off of that drama. Mm -hmm. Right. And also in the book, it's kind of goes in the direction of what you do with your consulting work. Basically, there's a theory in the book that describes five character types, not personality types. These are trauma generated or trauma induced character types. And you're going to be one of five of those character types. So there are people who deal with trauma by avoiding, right? There are people who deal with trauma by feeling sorry for themselves. They're helpless, they feel sorry for themselves, they're victim, always the victim, right? And then there are people who deal with trauma by being strong, confronting everything, right? So depending on your personality, like your baseline, whatever happens, you may find yourself becoming one of those five characters. The moment that character materializes in your psyche, it will keep repeating the cycles. And that is the proxy diet. It will keep repeating cycles that you can keep feeding on that, that type of energy. Okay. Yeah. So the work is to not only allow people to understand this process, because once you understand it, it will open your eyes to it. You don't necessarily need to have these like sessions. You at least can kind of get a general idea of what you're looking at. If you want to get some real help, then you can, you know, try to get some guidance or coaching. But the book is meant to at least keep like put people on the track of understanding what's happening to them and mm -hmm. understand whether or not you need that help or what kind of help you need. Because some traumas are pretty deep. It's right. not everything that can be resolved with conversation, right? So, but at least you will know what's happening to you. Do you take those characters and talk through like a full description, like an example of each one of those so that people can kind of have a relation to it? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And there's a logic to it. Um, and each character has, just like anything is in life, it has its kind of good qualities and dangerous qualities. You know, sometimes it's okay to step back. But if you become the person that just steps back from everything, right, you regress it. And that's another character type. There are people that when they face with challenge, all they do is just back away. You'll mm -hmm. keep backing away from everything. And that becomes who they are. But then it's like, is that really who you are? Not really. <clears throat> sure. You may have one of those character types that is more dominant in you by nature. But it doesn't mean that's the only thing that you are. But somehow you became that way as a result of some mm -hmm. of these trauma cycles that you've gone through throughout your life. So I guess my work is to help shed the light on what might have caused you to form these character types within yourself. Right. You don't always have to go to war against everything and trying to cure it all. You may be okay living with it, but at least you know where you stand. And at least you know where some of those character characteristics about yourself come from mm -hmm. and what it's doing to you. And also, it's not all bad, right? No, yeah. What, what, everything that is part of you is there for a reason. Because, for example, if I wasn't the person that went through what I had to go through in life to be where I am today, I wouldn't be the one writing a book today, right? Sometimes trauma gives you an edge. Sometimes trauma gives you a sense of direction. Sometimes trauma guides you to finding your passion in life. 
So this is not like we're going to war against Trump. There's nothing, like, it's not like that. The idea is for you to understand how the layout of what is you. You should say that in the beginning with people. Okay. I think that is huge. Okay. Because when they come into these things and they think of, oh, I'm going to do some interpersonal work. Yes. Some people stop before they ever get started. And that's a very real fear. Oh, yeah. For people. Oh, yeah. And it's valid. It is valid. I agree. It's valid. But I like what you just said in that our job is not to go to war with that trauma. Our job is not to even completely resolve that trauma in this work. Our job is to recognize what it is, identify what happens, what what character we become whenever something triggers us like this, and mm-hmm. have tools that help us work through that in the moment so we don't have a repeat cycle over and over and over again. That's our job. But I think that what you just said is really, really key in the beginning for people, because then they maybe feel like it's not such a daunting task to have to go back and deal with that. Yeah. And yeah, it's uh, and every case is unique, right? Because it's like in a book, I call it a trauma cocktail. It's like a mixology, a mixologist kind of, you know, made your trauma cocktail. Everybody, because everything that you combine with something else and combine with different circumstances, it it becomes, it takes on a life of, you know, on its own. And it becomes a very unique thing to that person. So first of all, there is no one, one size fits all, right? Every single, we can be talking about the same type of trauma, but mm-hmm. it affects each person differently, depending on the age, depending on the person, depending, you know what I mean? What part of the world they're in, what kind of brainwashing they were subjected to, what happens after or what happened before that, because usually it's about the contrast, not necessarily yeah. what happened. So these are all things that that's why, like, when we talk, I ask so many questions because you need to understand the context. It's not just attacking trauma for the sake of attacking trauma. It's understanding the person as a whole. 